Uh, so just finished up uh, talking and recapping the Carolina Panthers game in which I look like a complete jackass. By the way, all the Panthers fans, make a meme out of me. You know, talk trash, whatever it is. I definitely deserve it. Uh, and then also preview the uh, Cincinnati Bengals game, which was really quick. I mean, my only concern really is Vontez Burfitt, especially if the offensive line is still, as far as the personnel is concerned, is not 100% or at least 85%. I understand Riley Reef. There's, I would assume there's a good chance he's, he may miss next week. Uh, but it, you want Pat Elf lying out there. I think this is a good opportunity for him to grow as far as in his young career already. I believe he should be in the running. Pat Elf line should be in the running for Offensive Rookie of the Year. And I know he it's he's a center, so it's not a sexy position. So more than likely it will go to – uh, well, a running back, he, Kareem Hunt was in the running for a little bit. He's he's trailed off a little bit since then. Running back, a wide receiver, whatever, we'll have to see. But I think he should get at least a vote for Offensive Rookie of the Year. So now moving forward, the rest of this NFC picture, because before last week, uh, before the loss of the Carolina Panthers, the Vikings, they had the number one seed at the time. Now after losing to Carolina and after the Philadelphia Eagles beat the LA Rams, now they've got, let's see, they're a game up on the Minnesota Vikings right now. So there's still a couple of games left. And I'm looking at this, uh, the rest of their seat, the rest of the season, the Eagles. And by the way, Carson Wentz is out. And I, I just, I feel so awful for the Philadelphia Eagles fan base. My brother-in-law, he's a big time Eagles fan. Uh, he seemed to handle it very well. I was like, Hey man, sorry about that. You know, it, it happens, but it just seems like the Philadelphia Eagles seem like the now Oakland Raiders of last year. Derek Carr and the Oakland Raiders last year, if you guys remember, they were on a tear. I thought I thought the, the Oakland Raiders were going to have a chance to at least make it to the AFC Championship game last year. But then Derek Carr went down, and it wasn't the same since. I think it's a little bit different for the Eagles this time. I, I compared the two as far as your star quarterback going down late in the season. But I think there's a little bit of optimism. And maybe the Eagles can hold on to that number one seed because a couple of reasons uh the rest of their the rest of the games they've got they've got the new york giants and i picked the the giants to lose that game i I know i've said that eli manning gives you a chance to win a game for the giants i mean especially with that newfound motivation that they have now that ben mcadoo is fired and now that he's starting football again and everyone's happy and woo yeah we got eli back you know whatever even though you should be losing every game possible to go after josh rosen or sam darnold but i think that they'll win that game uh, they've got the Raiders after the Giants, and then they've got the Cowboys after that. Now, the Raiders, you never know. I think that's more of a 50-50 game. And actually, with the Dallas Cowboys, now you got to remember, the Cowboys, they've got something to play for. Not only do what I give the edge to the Cowboys uh, as far as, you know, possibly winning this game, but the fact that, and this is at the end of the season, you got to remember, Ezekiel Elliott is going to be back. The Dallas Cowboys are going to have something to play for because they're not going to win the NFC East. The, the Eagles, they've already clinched it at this point. Ezekiel Elliott's going to be back, and Nick Foles going against Dak Prescott. I mean, it's not necessarily a duel of the, the great quarterbacks. I think Nick Foles is vastly underrated, especially as a backup quarterback. You remember when he was starting with the Philadelphia Eagles a couple of years ago? He actually did very well, I believe, under Chip Kelly. He had, Or was it uh, uh, Andy Reid? I couldn't remember. Or maybe he played for both of them. But... Nick Foles is not a bad quarterback, and quite honestly, I take the L.A. Rams experience he had. I throw it out the window because Jeff Fisher was his head coach. By the way, the quarterbacks, the three quarterbacks that Jeff Fisher has recently coached as far as uh, Case Keenum with the Vikings, uh, uh, Jarrett Goff with the Rams now, and Nick Foles uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. This is the second time with the Philadelphia Eagles. They're all doing pretty good this year. He stepped up. He looked very cool, calm, and collective. Nick Foles did after Carl, uh, Carson Wentz went down. So I wouldn't. I actually wouldn't be surprised if the Philadelphia Eagles hold on. Now, if the Vikings do run the table, if they do run the table, and the Eagles lose, let's say uh, versus the Oakland Raiders and versus the Dallas Cowboys, then at that point, yes, the the first the the number one seed would go to the Minnesota Vikings. However, if the Philadelphia Eagles can go two out of two and one out of the last three. Then all of a sudden you're talking about being tied. I believe the Minnesota Vikings would be as long as they assuming they run the table. Then you're talking about being tied. And then as far as strength, the schedule, we'll have to see about that as far as how that would turn out. Then it just it's up for grabs after that. Um, so there's a good chance. I think the Vikings, no matter what happens, they should finish with the number two seed. At least they should at least have a first round bye. And then you're talking about the Green Bay Packers because now that's, that's all the latest rage now. 
Oh, and Rodgers is back. Woo! Yeah! Oh, going to run the table. Down. And who knows? Maybe they can. A couple of years ago, they did that where they ran the table and came back and won the, I believe they won the NFC North that way. But I'm looking at their schedule now. Now, it's not, at least as far as what I see so far, I haven't seen it made official yet. Now, maybe by the time this podcast comes out, maybe it'll be different. I haven't seen it made, I haven't seen an official announcement that Aaron Rodgers is definitely going to be back this week. Now, if he's going to come back. If you're Green Bay, if you're a Green Bay Packers fan, you want him back next week against the Carolina Panthers. Like I said, they've got a top 10 defense. I thought with Mike Zimmer with the Minnesota Vikings, they would shut Cam Newton up because I think the Carolina Panthers, I still think they're frauds. They've got a very good defense. But as far as Cam Newton leading your helm, I don't think it's going to amount to nothing. Now, granted, they beat the Vikings. I'm not taking that away from them. But as far as Cam Newton, I would never, never start my franchise with Cam Newton. And that's why I think ultimately you're going to have to rely on your quarterback to make plays down the stretch. And with these complete teams that you'd be going against, I, I just don't think the Panthers are really all that touted up that they are. But their defense is still damn good. They're one of the top 10 defenses in the NFL. And Aaron Rodgers is going to have to go against the, or Aaron Rodgers or Brett Hundley is going to have to go on next next week against the Carolina Panthers. This is this is actually at Carolina. So if you want Aaron Rodgers to come back and he posted that Instagram pictures, I'm back. Woo. Yeah. Oh, doctors cleared me to come back. And you know what? Maybe he'll come back. You want him to come back against this Carolina Panthers defense, because if you put Brett Hundley against that defense, I'm not sure. I know he's had a good stretch. Yes, he beat what the Cleveland Browns. He he threw three touchdowns against the Cleveland Browns. Congratulations. But now you're talking about going against a Carolina defense that's very stout. They've got an excellent pass rush. So we'll have to see. If you want Aaron Rodgers back, you want him to come back now. I don't know if it's if if, if it's necessarily smart because I don't think the Packers have a chance. Even going against the Minnesota Vikings in Lambeau Field, I don't think they have a chance against the Vikings in that game. Just be Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback. He's one of the all time great quarterbacks. Personally, I, I think the talent-wise, I think Aaron Rodgers is better than Brett Favre. That's just me personally. But as far as the rest of that team is concerned, I, I, I wouldn't worry about the Vikings going against the Green Bay Packers. But if he comes back against this Carolina team and all of a sudden kicks ass, then I'd be a little bit concerned because, you know, momentum is a hell of a thing to have in sports. But we'll just have to see. So as far as the rest of this NFC picture is concerned, I believe that the Vikings should finish at the very least with the number two seed. There's still a chance that you can get that number one seed. That's something that you should still be fighting for. So that's why every single game matters now, even in week 17, where normally, uh, depending on how seeding goes, you normally rest your starters, ass, whatever. But you're going to be playing every single game like it counts. So I expect the Vikings to at least have the number two seed. There's still a chance that you can have the number one seed, but I'm not giving them the automatic chance because Nick Foles is the quarterback of the Eagles. I think he's vastly underrated. I think he can do just enough to keep the train rolling. Obviously, the offense won't be as efficient as if Carson Wentz was there, but their defense is still very, very good. The Eagles are. So we'll have to see how the rest of the season goes. And then also, as far as um, uh, two quick things, as far as elsewhere in sports real quick, I'm going to stay in the NFL and then go to the NBA as far as elsewhere in sports. Elsewhere in sports. So uh, one of the uh, one of the Facebook followers, you can follow the page, facebook.com slash realisticrandy. He was talking about, uh, he, he brought notice to me. This was after um, I brought up Carson Wentz and how he's out for the game and how, was, you know, as, as not only out for the game, but out for the year with the torn ACL. And I just said, man, this is this is pretty tough. I feel bad for the Eagles fan base. And one of the followers, I don't have his name in front of me. But anyway, he was just like, hey, did you check this out? And he, he referred to the Jacksonville Jaguars game up against the Seattle Seahawks. I, I believe it was in Jacksonville uh, for that game. And the thing is, actually, it was in Jacksonville for that game. And there was a couple of things that happened. Number one, the fans. So actually, no, I actually no. Let me backtrack from that because I actually no. Let me start with that. The fans. The fans throwing beer at, I don't know, the Seattle Seahawks player that got ejected, but throwing beer at the player, you know, very reminiscent of Malice in the Palace. I don't, you know what, I don't understand. Actually, you know what, forget understand, because there's some people, there's there's certain situations in life, and I tell my wife this all the time, because my wife is very, you know, passionate, and she's very caring, 
And whenever anything bad happens in the world, she's like, I don't understand why this happens. And I'm like, you know what? Honestly, there's certain people in the world that you don't waste your time. Don't waste your time trying to figure out the why with with people. Certain people, they just do stuff and they don't give a damn about the consequences. They just they're just living in the moment and they don't care. They just do stuff for the hell of it without thinking twice about it. Don't try to figure out the why in every single situation. Throwing beers on players and, and cussing them out and throwing, they threw a bunch of uh, different uh, objects at them. And hopefully that fan or those fans got caught and they'll be banned uh, from stadiums in the NFL moving forward. If they can be charged with something, go for it because that, that has no room for the game. But quite honestly, am I surprised by this? Absolutely not. Quite honestly, even if I go to a, home, a Vikings home game, if I go to U.S. Bank Stadium, I went there last year, it was great. But even if I go to a home game, the thing is, and, and, you know, we're all fans here, and that's all great, but there's too many just drunk fans out there. It's like a coliseum. Everybody's drunk together, and then, it, oh, if someone's standing up and sit down and everybody's ready to fight all the time, it can just get a little bit crazy. So I'm not surprised that that happened in that game as far as throwing beers. The thing that I do have an issue with, and this goes back to what the Facebook follower said to me as far as, hey, check this out, what do you think, was in regards to Michael Bennett. going after It was the victory formation with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and Michael Bennett went after dude. I think he tried to swipe the ball, um, even though it was victory formation. He tried to make a last-ditch effort. But then he, like, rolled up one of the offensive linemen's legs, and then it was just real scrappy after that. That's Bush League, man. That's Bush League, man. That's just dirty. It's just you lost, okay? And not to say that you should concede. If you can try to swipe the ball at the snap, then great. Have at it. But then going after and then showing your frustration because, yes, I get it. You're in contention for for a playoff spot. More notably, you're probably better off at a wild card spot because uh, actually, I don't have the uh, I don't have the standings in front. Actually, I do. Okay, so the Rams are nine and four, and the Seattle Seahawks are eight and five. So the Rams are game up on the Seattle Seahawks. I believe that as far as a tiebreaker is concerned, as of right now, the Seattle Seahawks would have that. But as of right now, the L.A. Rams they are the NFC West. Uh, they're first in the NFC West right now. So as far as the Seattle Seahawks are concerned, you're better off. Uh, well, not better off. I mean, if you can get the, if you can get uh, win the NFC West, that's great. But right now, realistically, you're looking at a wild card spot. So I get the frustration with that, trying to get a win and and grind it out. And and not only that, but your kicker Blair Walsh <laughs> already cost you two games. Uh, in this regular season. So I get the frustration there, but none of this surprised me. I think it's Bush League. I think dirty, just the dirty plays that happens in football, in, in football is what's a turnoff for me. And I would imagine it's what's a turnoff for a lot of fans out there. I watch the games. I watch the NFL for as long as it's out there. I'm going to support the Minnesota Vikings. And I watch the NFL as a general fan as well. But as far as, quite honestly, because of the dirty plays that happen time and time again, and with all the CTE, and look, I get that everyone tries to make the game safer, but I'm sorry, you got dudes that are that are just bigger, bigger, stronger, stronger, and getting faster and faster. And the human reaction, the natural reaction, nature takes over. They just want to get the hit. So no matter what happens, terrible stuff is going to happen. So when you add that with dirty plays that seem to happen every single game, maybe even sometimes multiple times a game, if I have a son, I'm not letting him play football. In high school, he can make up his own decision. I don't have a son. But hypothetically, if I do have a son, uh, if, I wouldn't let him play. Definitely not young. Now, in high school, once you're older and you can make that decision, go for it. I'm not going to be there to, to try to stop you. I'll support you in whatever it is that you do. But that's the kind of thing that takes away from the luster of the game. They just It just leaves a sour taste in your mouth uh, moving forward. So also, elsewhere in sports, uh, going to shift to the NBA real quick before we end this podcast. DeMarcus Cousins, he's in trade rumors right now as far as, you know, uh, he's with the Pelicans. This is his last year. He'll be a free agent next year, if I'm not mistaken. And there's talks about what well, the Cleveland Cavaliers should go after him. And quite honestly, if the Cavaliers go after him, I think they should do it. I think that would make that team. Because right now, even though the Cavs are having a pretty good year, they had a good turnaround after starting having a slow start. They're making the turnaround, and the Boston Celtics, hey, man, they're out there too. They have a chance to actually dethrone the Cavs, LeBron James and the Cavs, this year in the Eastern Conference champion, uh, Championship, which I think that both teams will meet. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Celtics win. But even if the Cavs win and go to the finals, you're going to go against the Golden State Warriors. You don't have a shot. 
not with that roster. And even if Isaiah Thomas comes back, I still – well, I would give you a little bit of a shot, but not really. You add DeMarcus Cousins to that team, and assuming Isaiah Thomas – because Isaiah Thomas is not even back yet. So assuming he comes back and he's able to get back to that MVP form like he was last year. And by the way, I'm, I'm going to say this to the day I die. That 2016-2017 season, Isaiah Thomas should have been an MVP. I know everyone's all about the triple doubles and the stats and Russell Westbrook and, and everything like that. But we're talking about most valuable player. Number one seed in the Eastern Conference uh, 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 with less, far less of a supporting cast than the Oklahoma City Thunder did last year. And then the Thunder, I think they finished as the sixth seed. And then they gave it to Russell Westbrook, I'm assuming, because of the triple-doubles. He averaged a triple-double last year. But now you're seeing a team that they have now, and maybe they can turn around. I thought they were going to be up there as far as being contention with the Golden State Warriors to challenge them for seven games in the Western Conference Finals. But quite honestly, the way it's looking right now, the way that it's looking right now, you got Paul George and Carmelo Anthony, and they're not looking good at all. Like With Russell Westbrook, you would think this would be a bona fide team, but the problem is they're still running that team through Russell Westbrook. That team should be ran through Paul George with Russell with Russell Westbrook as the second option. So anyway, getting a little bit off track here. DeMarcus Cousins. If you add DeMarcus Cousins to that roster with LeBron James, Kevin Love, and assuming Isaiah Thomas can come back healthy, and who knows if Derrick Rose can get it back together. He's been having a little bit, I don't know, he's been a little bit out there the last couple of years with the Knicks and now the Cavs where he needs to take some time off. And So I don't know. But anyway, all that aside, assuming he can come back and be okay, and if DeMarcus Cousins can get there, because here's the thing, you're going to have to give up that Brooklyn pick, okay? You're going to have to get up. You're going to have to give up that Brooklyn pick uh, in order to have a chance because, you know what, you're not going to trade Kevin Love. You're not going to trade LeBron. Obviously, he has no trade clause, cause, so he can agree to a trade or not. You're not going to trade Isaiah Thomas. The only way you're going to make this happen is by trading Tristan Thompson, who – the Cavs can't give away at this point because that contract is god awful. By the way, I don't, you know what? I, I just sit back and laugh sometimes when these NBA GMs sign these players, just just these players to these absurd contracts for the hell of it. Like Joe Kim Noah. Joe Kim Noah is making, I don't, what, uh, 16, 17, maybe close to $20 million a year. And for whatever reason, I don't understand it. So now they're like, oh, how can we get rid of this contract? And I'm like, how did you not know this was going to be an issue? The Chicago Bulls last year, when they signed uh, Dwayne Wade. To that, what, two-year, $20 million contract, $20 million a year contract. And then all of a sudden, after last year ended, they're like, oh, what can we do to get out of this contract? It's like, how did you not see this? So I don't feel sorry for, for teams that like the Cavaliers that signed Tristan Thompson to damn near a max contract. I believe it was, what, four years and $82 million because LeBron James was, was speaking out to the media and making Instagram posts like, get it done and all this stuff. I don't feel sorry for you one bit. But as far as you're going to have to trade him to try to clear up the cap room in order to do that. But the only way that the only way that any team, any team, no matter if you're trying to trade for DeMarcus Cousins or whoever, or DeAndre Jordan, he's been on in the trade rumors as well. No matter who it is you're trying to trade for, if you're going to try to get uh try to get rid of Tristan Thompson, the only way that happens is if you add that Brooklyn Nets first round pick. That's the only way that happens. But if the if the New Orleans Pelicans, if they're down for it, I'd absolutely do it. Now, the thing is, if you're a little bit hesitant with DeMarcus Cousins, because I watch DeMarcus Cousins all the time. Even I live in the uh, 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 NorCal area, up in the Bay Area, and uh, back when the, uh, DeMarcus Cousins was, was with the Kings, me and my wife, we used to watch the Kings all the time because DeMarcus Cousins is fun to watch as far as when he's not throwing tantrums and then when he's not getting technical fouls and getting ejected. He's fun to watch when he's just simply playing basketball. But unfortunately... Every single game, there's an instance, if he doesn't get his way, he's yelling at the refs, he flops. It's, it's really annoying. So you're going to have to deal that. You're not going to get rid of that at all. But if you can somehow, I don't know, and I know that the talks have been all the time, oh, if you could just somehow get him to calm down. But if you can get him on your team, even with the temper tantrums, with LeBron James, Isaiah Thomas, assuming he's healthy, uh, healthy and Kevin Love, and DeMarcus, that would be, you'd have a shot to actually go up against the Golden State Warriors and actually beat them. So I think you make the trigger, you, you pull the trigger now. LeBron James, you don't know if he's going to come back. Isaiah Thomas, he's going to be an unrestricted free agent after next year. DeMarcus Cousins, the same with them. Go all in for this year, and then after next year, figure it all out. So go from there and figure it all out. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. We've been doing this for about a year and a half up to this point. We definitely appreciate the support. 
up to this point. Uh, if you got any questions, comments, concern, you can uh, follow the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Realistic Randy. You can follow us on Twitter at Realistic underscore Randy. Uh, or it, whatever the case, you can uh, subscribe on iTunes or YouTube. We'll see you next week. <laughs>